It's cataractcoach.com, and we've got a fun case today. This is a patient who is on Flomax, another floppy iris syndrome patient. And I'll show you how we'll chop his lens up in the bag and remove it. But the pupil's going to come down during the case, and we're going to end up with a much smaller pupil than you see here. And the thing I want to teach you today is how to do a bimanual cortex removal, so bimanual irrigation aspiration. We're going to be using a transformer IA handpiece, which will split apart so I can have the infusion in one hand and the aspiration in the other. And that's going to allow us to get under the edge of the iris, under the rexus, and really clean up and get out that cortex. So that's going to be the neat technique of the day. Big dilation there, that looks great, but that's the viscomedriasis, and that means the viscoelastic is holding the pupil open. We'll create our main incision here, single plane using that keratome. And remember, now we're going to create that capsorexis on the large side. So this pupil dilation, maybe even six millimeters, and we want to ensure that we have at least a five and a half millimeter capsorexis. So there's that rexus edge we can see. We're tearing this. And as we tear the rexus, we lose a little viscoelastic out the incision there. And that's going to cause the pupil to come down because remember, it's that viscoelastic that's holding it there. So I'll start to hug the edge of the pupil in creating this capsorexis. So that looks like a pretty good rexus, nice and complete. And now we'll do some hydro dissection. Careful with the hydro dissection. We don't want to have too much pressure there behind the iris because that would cause more prolapse. So we'll get a little bit of a fluid wave, another fluid wave, and let's see if we can spin this nucleus. Maybe another fluid wave. And does it rotate? Yeah, it certainly rotates. Now an extra little dollop of dispersive viscoelastic to protect that corneal central endothelium. Now ready for our phaco probe. High flow, high vacuum, high bottle height, moderate power. We're gonna dig in with a chopper and also buzz in with the phaco probe at the same time. And let's split this nucleus into, boom, two halves. There it is. Each half now can be brought up. Notice I use the chopper with the left hand to keep one half down and move it out of the way while I bring up the other half and then we just sub-chop it. So here's a little piece taken off the first half. The rest of the first half of the nucleus is brought up and just emulsified with the phaco probe. This is not a terribly dense lens but it's still reasonable density. Buzz in the other second half, chopper goes around. There we go, we just chop it up into halves. And using the phaco probe, just phaco aspirate these pieces down quite efficiently. That looks great. And now, ready for irrigation aspiration. So what I wanna show you here is this special hand piece. We're gonna have in our right hand the infusion, so we can see we already have some iris prolapse there. We'll put the infusion in here through the main incision, and that's gonna have a sleeve on it just to fill up that main incision so it's wide enough. And then through the second hand or the side port, we'll use the aspiration device. And that'll allow us to get full 360 access here to all of this lens cortex. So there's the infusion. You can see how small the pupil is at this point. And we'll take our aspiration port there. That's in the left hand and we'll go under the iris. And we wanna grab onto bits of the cortex and strip it centrally. And it's not easy because we're not directly visualizing it. So we just take our time. And now you can see that there's quite a bit of cortex that's really stuck on there. So this is not a speed show here. This is not going to be one of the fast cataracts. In fact, this one's going to be about eight, nine minutes. So taking our time, we're trying to get an edge so we can grab it and pull all that forwards. So again, the right hand is just the infusion. It's only infusing fluid in the eye. The left hand is doing all the aspirating. So finally getting a hold on this, and we can see it's going to be a big shell. So my goal now is just to loosen up that entire shell, and it'll come up in, in one piece. You can see we removed most of it there, and then rotating this around. Hard to get access, so what we can do is we can switch hands. We can put the piece back together. Oh, actually, I'm going to make some incisions here. Here's what I'm doing. 
We're fenestrating the conjunctiva because we're getting some chemosis. So just taking a little break there. Now let's go back in the eye again. This is the beauty of watching an unedited video. You get to see all these steps. So taking a, a, our time to get that piece of cortex there. It's a big epinuclear shell. There it is. That whole shell comes up. And that looks excellent. Most of it's up now. We got to get that remainder. Again, trying to find an edge to hold and to bring it up. There it is. Using the second hand just to help lift. Inadvertently grabbing the arms. Be careful with that. And there it is. That's a big break. Once we get that big epinuclear shell out, that's a lot cleaner. Now taking our time and let's remove all the cortex and we'll check very carefully. Now I know what you're saying. You're saying, why not just put in a pupil expansion device or use some iris hooks? And certainly that's a very viable option here. And you've seen my recent videos. I've used a pupil expansion device and show you my technique for that. But I want you to know that you can still do things without having to rely on those devices. And uh, the teaching aspect of this is actually tremendous. It's also one of the first times we're featuring this bimanual irrigation aspiration, this bimanual transformer IA tip. So you notice I now put it back together. Now it's coaxial INA to get the remainder that's going to be difficult to access through the paracentesis. You could make an additional paracentesis incision 180 degrees apart and then go from there, but this works just fine. So it looks like we're pretty clean here and the time to fill up the caps or bag and load up our lens. And you notice the mobility of this iris, how floppy it is. So we'll fill up the caps or bag and oh, there's some cortex there nasally. Do you see that? You got to remove that. So this is important to check and lift up the iris. We're going to do that. Lift up the iris after we get the lens in to make sure we got all the cortex out. There comes the lens, leading haptic, optic. Get that whole thing in the capture bag, taking our time with that. Give a little rotation here. The rotation will also allow those haptics to help loosen up any cortex. And we can examine, yep, there's definitely some cortex material in that nasal quadrant. Subincisional, temporal, superior, inferior looks fine, but nasally, under the nasal iris, there's going to be some cortex that has to be removed. So IA probe, let's first get up under there. Try to grab that cortex. Careful not to grab the iris too much. I think we pretty much have it. How do we know for sure? Well, we gotta check. So taking out the rest of the viscoelastic. Let's use the chopper. Let's lift up that nasal iris and check. Ah, that's good, but what's that over there? Ah, there's some more. Let's get that last piece out. So this is a technique to use your chopper or second instrument to lift the iris to ensure that we've got all the cortex out of the eye. If you leave any cortex behind, it'll swell up overnight and it'll be right in the visual axis tomorrow. So I've now checked that everything's totally clear. So this is a fun case and I got to show you a small pupil, Flomax case, but also got to show you how we use the bimanual or split irrigation aspiration to do the cortex removal. Thank you guys for watching. I sincerely appreciate it.